Welcome, my name is Sean Denning, and I'm presenting to you about Project Lead the Way and teaching engineering curriculum in high school. What is Project Lead the Way? Project Lead the Way is an organization founded between 1997 and 1998 that is devoted to teaching engineering curriculum at the high school level. Project Lead the Way gives the ability for high school students who are interested in pursuing an education in engineering to achieve this by incorporating engineering sciences into a standard high school curriculum. The nationwide accredited program is rapidly growing and allowing the potential for an increase in engineers. What are some of the benefits of Project Lead the Way? Students get a hands-on experience in the field of engineering and technical sciences. This program was actually incorporated into my own high school, to which I was an active participant in, and will illustrate some of the projects I had the opportunity to work on through my course of attending high school. While the student is enrolled in this program, he or she has the opportunity to obtain college credit to be used at a higher education level, especially if they would like to pursue engineering in the future. Previously, when I was an attendee of this program, this was not an option and the courses only counted towards elective courses. The curriculum that is ex to be explained later is not secluded from that of the high school curriculum, but rather is incorporated into it. Usually high school students are required to take elective courses throughout their high school career. Like I mentioned previously, I had not the option of using college credit for these courses, but rather had to take them as an elective base and voluntary. Let's look at some of the breakdown of the curriculum. These are known as the tiers. The curriculum is broken down into three tiers. The first being a foundation in engineering, where students are exposed to a variety of classes that include an introduction to engineering, principles of engineering, and digital electronics. The second tier involves specialization courses, which dig deeper into engineering and involves courses related to aerospace, biotechnical engineering, civil engineering and architecture, and computer integrated manufacturing. The third tier involves capstone courses in which the final step is to be completed in this advanced curriculum of this program, which involves engineering design development where students get a chance to do research and present an idea or design to the engineering community. Let's take a closer look to each tier. The first tier incorporates an introduction to engineering design. This course involved in the first tier deals with engineering design usually involving CAD programs in which CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. The programs that are most commonly used are Pro Engineer and Autodesk Inventor in which the students can create three-dimensional parametric models of specific devices. Some of these examples are shown below. The next course is known as Principles of Engineering, which takes a different approach into engineering in a political and social manner. The students get an insight into how political and social policies and regulations influence the design aspect of engineering. This step also reaches a close a proximity with a great deal of involvement with ethics involved in engineering. Below is a contrasting picture of an electric car from the early 20th century to a new car known as the Chevy Volt, which is yet to come out. The next course is known as Digital Electronics, which gives the students an insight into the basic concepts of electrical engineering and basic circuits. Students obtain both an analytical knowledge behind the basic concepts of electrical circuits and back up its knowledge with the development of computer-generated models using a program known as P-SPICE. Below left corner is a diagram of a common P-SPICE model used to generate a circuit problem followed by the right-hand sign, which is an actual circuit that I had generated in high school, which is known as a bandpass filter, which regulates signal generation. Let's look at Tier 2. First, this next series of courses allow the student to get a deeper look into specific fields of engineering. The first being aerospace engineering, which allows students to gain knowledge into spaceflight and development of aircraft. The next is biotechnical engineering, which branches the fields of biology, physics, engineering sciences, and mathematics to aid in the medical field. Illustrated below is what's known as the Da Vinci robot, which is a revolutionary piece of machinery in which common invasive surgery is replaced by this robot, which is almost completely non-invasive. Let's take a closer look to civil engineering and architecture, which prepares the students with the design and knowledge behind structures, bridges, and other concepts behind civil engineering and architecture. Students use programs such as AutoCAD to develop 2D computer-generated models of homes, structures, buildings, etc. 
Below is a design project, which I actually had a, the ability to create, which the project entailed that we had to create a bridge that resembled an already existing bridge. This one being the replica of a Tappan Zee bridge. The reason only half the model is there is because we actually had to test the structural integrity of this model by making a force down on the roadway part of the design. This design was completely made out of balsa wood, and this design didn't fail until it reached a maximum load of 200 pounds. Computer integrated manufacturing gives the students an insight to the concepts behind the manufacturing industry. The student is exposed to all aspects of manufacturing, including from the design concept to the production line to the consumer operation. Students get a chance to use programs to facilitate manufacturing. In my case, we had to use computer software to program a milling machine to cut out specific patterns onto a wax block, wax block, which is illustrated on the bottom left-hand corner. We were also required to develop a system or assembly line to mass produce a series of desktop clocks, which are shown on the right-hand side. Now, Tier 3. This final step in the curriculum involves the students to come up with a final design project to which they may seek outside research and present their design to the engineering community. What is involved in this step doesn't only include design, but facilitation of design including research, design proposal, work instruction, packaging, and further steps that are required in the industry. Our senior project was to develop a tabletop game and first develop a design proposal followed by a computer generated model of the design, work instruction, safety instruction, packaging, and finally marketing. Our design project was of a tabletop pool game, which can be illustrated below. The left-hand side is the packaging that was used to house the pool game, and the right-hand side is the pool game itself. Coming to a close. Without this curriculum being taught in high school, students don't have the complete exposure to engineering. With exposure to this engineering background, students can better prepare themselves before entering in a higher-level high level education institution to pursue engineering. I know if I had not been exposed to this program, I quite possibly never, might never have decided on engineering. And without the knowledge I had obtained firsthand in high school, I may have been even lacking some of the background needed when first entering into college. This is the conclusion of my presentation, and here are my references. Thank you.